We would love it if everybody became a member of Club Twit at twit.tv slash club twit. So on occasion, we release free episodes of Hands on Mac to show you exactly what you'll get if you join the club. Thanks for listening, and uh, we can't wait to see you in the club. Coming up on Hands on Mac, it's time to take a look at how to create a bootable installer for macOS Ventura. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Welcome back to Hands on Mac. Today's episode focuses on creating a bootable installer for macOS Ventura. Uh, this is a way for you to make sure that even if your Mac is giving you all sorts of problems and you're having trouble uh, getting the, the restore features to work, or you are unable to enter recovery mode, or perhaps you just want to install uh, the latest version of macOS on multiple machines, well, this is where having an external drive or even a secondary volume can come into play as a way to boot uh, macOS and install it on the machine that you have. So uh, what you will need for this is a Mac that is running the latest version of macOS, as well as a flash drive or another kind of uh, volume. It can be you know, a hard drive or maybe even um, a, a secondary volume that is on your Mac itself with at least 14 gigabytes of available storage. And the first step we need to take is to format the drive so that it so that it is Mac OS extended. So let's head over to the Mac to take a look at how we do this. So here I am on the Mac and I'm going to take uh, my flash drive and plug it in and wait for it, of course, to pop up on the side uh, so that I know that it has loaded. And there it is. Then I'm going to hold down command and press the space button and type in disk utility to bring up disk utility. From here, I will find the drive, which is called uh, the iExpand flash drive media. And I need to make sure that it is uh, a macOS extended drive. So I will click on the volume itself within disk utility and look at the type of uh, formatting that's that's in place. In this case, it is macOS extended. Now, your disk utility on this side may look complicated like mine does, or it may look simpler. Um, the way that you change between the different types is by choosing view and choosing show only volumes or choosing view and choosing show all devices. I will choose show only volumes just so you can see the simpler version that is the default for disk utility. And now you'll notice that I didn't need to click secondarily on my volume. That is the first option that's available there. So here it shows Mac OS extended journaled. I know that it's in the proper uh, format, but we're going to go ahead and format this drive fresh. I like to do it uh, from the full uh, sort of disk option as opposed to the volume that's on the disk. So I went up to view, I chose show all devices, and then I clicked on I expand flash drive media in order to select uh, the drive. And then we're going to go up and we're going to choose erase. We'll click on erase and we'll give this a name. Now I'm going to call mine my volume with a capital M and I need to choose OK. Um, I'm going to choose my volume with a capital M and a capital V, and I'll explain why soon. Uh, the format that we need to choose, you'll remember, needs to be Mac OS extended. And you can just choose the journaled option. You don't need to choose case sensitive. And then I'm going to choose GUID partition map as the scheme. Uh, that is a more modern version than the master boot record. Uh, and outside of that, it's not super important for our purposes today. I will click on erase and then watch as it formats this drive appropriately and renames it to my volume. So now this is done and I have my volume right here ready to go. My next step, because I can close out of Disk Utility now, is to uh, actually download macOS. So we can go into the App Store and we can type in macOS Ventura. We'll come across macOS Ventura. And then you just want to click Get. This will download macOS to your machine, even though you're already on macOS, and uh, provide it for you to actually install. Um, 
it will pop up and create a um, or give you the option to install it. You can just close out of that because, of course, that's not what we're trying to do. And then we need to start working with the magic of macOS and the terminal. So this is where things get a little bit more complicated because what we're going to need to do is actually uh, work in the terminal to create this uh, installation. So there are different versions uh, depending on which uh, version of macOS you're installing, different versions of the terminal commands. So depending on which version you're using, you will use that specific terminal command. Uh, there is a show, there's a, there's a link we'll include in the show notes uh, to an Apple support page that will give you the information you need on which terminal command to use, depending on which version of macOS you're using. Uh, and I'm going to pop open this page right now. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to see that we're trying to install Ventura. So I am going to launch terminal and bring it over here to the side. And then I'm going to uh, downsize the page here. And then I'm going to highlight this Ventura option and make sure I've got the whole thing selected. And then I'm just going to hold down command and tap C on the keyboard to copy. Uh, what I like to do is then open up a text edit document and choose new document and then paste it here just to make sure that you didn't accidentally add any line breaks to make sure that it truly is what you're expecting it because this does have uh, the super user command at the beginning of it. So we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing here. So let's take a look. Let's review this. So this is saying uh, basically as the root user, as the person with the most permission or the account with the most permission on this device, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go into applications and then I want you to find I want you to find install macOS Ventura. These um, little uh, slashes here are because there's a space after each of these with that install macOS Ventura app. And then go into the macOS Ventura app that's in your applications folder. Find contents, resources, create install media, and then it's telling it where to install it. In this case, the volume I want you to install it to is volumes slash my volume. That is why I chose to format this as my volume. If I didn't, I would need to put in the specific name here in order to have this work. So since I know it's called my volume, I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to command copy it. I'm going to command paste it into terminal, and then I'm going to hit enter or return. Then it's going to ask me for my password. At this point, I type in my password and you'll notice that as I'm typing it, it doesn't show the password uh, being spelled out. I will just hit, hit return once I've finished that process. And then it says, hey, is this really what you want to do? Because if you do, first we're going to erase that volume. I will uh, type Y and hit enter again. And then the first thing it does is erase the disk. Now, we just did that in disk utility and it's doing it again. That is just how this process works. Uh, then it's asking, hey, can the terminal access this uh, removable volume? I say, OK. And then it uh, completes the process of making the disk bootable. Uh, and so it is kind of working its magic yet again to make sure that it will uh, boot properly. And then um, after it finishes this process, then you will have this bootable installer. So we'll wait for this to finish. Um, the process. So this can take a second. All right. Uh, so after it finishes uh, creating the media and then making the disk bootable, uh, it's going to copy everything to that disk. And then it will uh, eventually get to a place where it says, hey, look, that media is now available at volume slash install macOS Ventura. So the volume that was once called my volume is now called install macOS Ventura. Uh, that completes the process of being able to uh, create a, a, a bootable uh, installer. And then depending on which type of device you're using, be it a macOS uh, Ventura on Apple Silicon or macOS Ventura on Intel, um, you start by taking the bootable installer, plugging it into the Mac, and then 
uh, you turn on your Mac, and this is on Apple Silicon, you turn on the Mac and continue to hold down that power button. And as you're holding down the power button, you'll see the startup options window appear, and it shows you the different volumes on your Mac that you can boot to. You select the uh, install Mac OS Ventura volume that you've plugged into the side of the computer, and then you follow through the prompts there. For an Intel machine, in this case, you don't press and continue to hold down on the power button. You press the power button, and then as soon as uh, you do that, you hold down the Alt or Option key on your Mac. Then it's going to uh, go to a screen that will show your bootable volumes, and you select, again, the volume that contains the bootable installer. So from there, you will be able to follow the on-screen prompt. So a little bit different depending on if you're using Apple Silicon or Intel. I do think Apple Silicon is a little bit easier because it's that one button, press and hold, uh, whereas on Intel, you press and then you got to hold down the Alt or Option key. At that point, you've got your bootable installer booted and you're able to finish the installation or a fresh copy of macOS Ventura right there on your Mac. So pretty exciting stuff, right? Um, and very easy to do. Now I've got this uh, little flash drive here that I can plug into any uh, Mac that I have and run that bootable installer and make sure everything's right as rain on that machine. Uh, very handy to have. So I hope that uh, you learned a little bit about how to uh, create this bootable installer or had your mind refreshed because I know many of you who watch this show probably know a thing or two about macOS, uh, but it's always good to be reminded of how to do these complex steps. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Hands on Mac. Uh, if you have questions, thoughts, suggestions, apps that you think I should be covering or uh, topics that you think I should be covering, you can send those to Micah. That's twits.tv, and I will catch you next week for another episode of Hands on Mac. Goodbye. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and I am the host of Hands on Photography here on Twit TV. I know you got yourself a fancy smartphone, you got yourself a fancy camera, but your pictures are still lacking. Can't quite figure out what the heck shutter speed means? Watch my show. I got you covered. Want to know more about just the ISO and exposure triangle in general. Yeah, I got you covered. Or if you got all of that down, you want to get into lighting, you know, making things look better by changing the lights around you. I got you covered on that too. So check us out each and every Thursday here on the network. Go to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe today.